Well, what's up, YouTube? What's up, YouTube? What's up, YouTube? Hey, what's up, YouTube? They're like, I, I just want to get this out there right now. Like, nobody's, pro well, probably nobody's going to be able to mix this up right away because it has a flavor in it that, uh, you know, nobody's probably ever even heard of. And I don't even know if you can get any more, but I think there's probably some adequate substitutions. Um, I'm lucky that I have it. It was actually given to me as a gift. I've never heard of it before. Um, never would have went out of my way to get it because I kind of just stick to what's available on Bull City, but it's neither here nor there. Half a dozen of this, six of the other, doesn't really matter. But it's a chocolate, and, you know, we've, we've had this discussion before how, you know, early on I thought that I was, like, chocolate mute, that I couldn't taste chocolates, and then... Um, and then I thought, you know, that like, there's just not any good chocolates and, you know, that kind of might be true. Um, but really it's just that chocolate doesn't, it, it, it's just not, how do I say this? Like, I still like chocolate vapes. I do. Um, it's just not the same, you know? And, th and there's, you know, several things that are like that, that they just don't vape the same as they are in real life. And there's other things that are like incredibly realistic in a vapor form. And, and, and so, like, I always kind of just gravitate towards those things. There's, like, good, solid, it's whatever, chocolate. Chocolate, graham crackers, marshmallows. Um, I don't know. Do, you, do, do people in other countries make s'mores? So, S apostrophe, I'm spelling that backwards. S apostrophe M-O-R-E. S more so it's like a it's like a camping thing you know when you're when you're when you're camping you go get a stick you got a bag of marshmallows you toast the marshmallow in the fire and then you take chocolate and graham crackers and you squish together and make a little sandwich it's like the most divine thing ever do people in other countries do that so I feel like you know I'm ignorant about about other about other countries so if I say s'mores like I shouldn't just I shouldn't just, you know, think that everybody's going to know what I'm talking about. So toasted marshmallow, chocolate, graham cracker, sandwich. We all know how I feel about graham crackers. And um, I saw this, I saw this recipe. I really should have done my research and um, looked up that recipe so that I could give credit where credit is due um, to the person that posted it. But it was a recipe for golden graham cereal, which is like little, little graham cracker squares uh, in cereal. And it used... It used this flavor in here, and I have had this flavor for ages, and I've never even opened it before. I don't know why I picked it up, uh, but it's uh, Flavor West Waffle Cone. Um, I, I don't know why I picked it up. Uh, I'm sure, you know, I was just perusing, and I thought that that should be something that I should have, a waffle cone. But actually, it's a really good graham cracker, and uh, I'd never used it before, never thought about it. It was just one of those flavors that's, you know, in my collection and sitting in a, a Flavor West box, and I've never used it. And I saw that on there and I was like, huh, you know, let's, let's try it out. So I tried it. I was like, wow, that is actually a really, really good graham cracker. And me, I love graham crackers. I own every single graham cracker. Um, yeah, most of them taste like graham crackers, but this is, it's, it's one of those things where like, you don't know until somebody tells you that this is not in fact a waffle coat and it is actually a very good graham cracker. So that's like... I, no, it's not the most important part of this recipe. It's not. It, it's just a. It's just a subtle thing. I really should have looked up whose recipe that was. I'll post it in the description. I'll, I'll I'll look it up and give credit where credit is due because I didn't think that one up on my own. I never would have tried it. It's not really something that I would have considered. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so I need to do this now while this is still hot. Like, I don't just sit here and drink wine and vape all the time. I actually really, really like coffee. I need to do this while this is still hot. So, um, you know, this isn't something fancy. It is a K-cup, you know, because that is how we consume coffee nowadays. I'm not going to pretend like, uh, you know, I'm some bougie person and I don't use K-cups because I'm not. Or I do. I do use K-cups. This is Green Mountain Dark Magic. Um, I don't love dark coffees. Just, this just happened to be the one that was in my pantry that I thought would pair best um, with this recipe. I have several different varieties. 
Um, I do have some uh, more eclectic coffees that, um, you know, that all French press or brew or whatever. Um, and, you know, we'll try those out. But I really thought that this one, I have one specifically that I'm holding on to for that recipe right there. And we'll get to that. And we're going to French press it and it's going to be delicious. But for now, this is a K-cup. It's dark magic. Um, there's not really a description on here other than it says bold, deep, and intense. And I can tell you with some amount of certainty that it is, in fact, all of those things. Mm. See, what that does is it adds so much to the marshmallow note. Mm. Yeah, that really makes the vanilla in the marshmallow pop. It, it oh, mm. That's a wonderful pairing. <laughs> wonderful pairing. Um, this coffee is... It, it is very dark. It is very bold. It's quite oily. Oily is something that I don't really look for in a coffee. It's not one of those things that, that I really, really like. But this stuff is so oily. Like, you can literally see the oil pooling on the top of there. It does a lot for the texture of the coffee as you drink it. Um, it kind of, like, coats, coats the palate, the oils from the coffee beans. I should just shut up and vape and drink coffee and... Mm. See, I drink my coffee black. I don't, I don't put any cream or sugar in it. Um, I really feel like, uh, you know, when you do that, you're kind of ruining the nuance. Yeah, you know, I understand to each their own, but I really like to taste the subtle differences in the, in the blends and try to pick up on those notes. It's, it goes back to that. It, it's more, it, it's a form of artistic expression, you know, roasting coffee beans, growing coffee beans, grinding coffee beans, all of that goes into your end product, and it's a craft, and, and it's art, and it's beautiful, and I absolutely love it. You know something else that I don't know if I've ever really touched on? I am a total bookworm. Uh, I don't think that I've ever told you that before, but but I, I really like books. I've been an avid reader uh, since I was very, very young. Um, we didn't have, like, cable TV or anything like that, and, um, excuse me, I grew up in a rather conservative home, and um, I wasn't allowed to watch a lot of things. Like, after 6 p.m., TV gets risky, and, you know, I wasn't allowed to consume that sort of content um, at, at a very young age, so I, I was always just encouraged to read. I always had lots of books available to me. My parents had quite a collection, and, you know, I, I could get whatever I wanted to. You know, I learned I learned that... You know, if I ask for that toy that I want, sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. But if it's a book, if I ask for a book, always, always got it. I would never get told no. This book, that book, two books, three books, go to the library, yes. So, like, I love reading. Um, right now I'm reading, I have it here somewhere. Um, so, The Magicians. Uh, this is a show that is is on is on Sci-Fi Channel, and I think I think it's on Netflix. Um, I actually watched the show before I even learned that this was a book, um, or books rather. It's a trilogy, and the, the the book's absolutely nothing like the show. I mean, there's ob there's obvious you know similarities. Uh, characters are pretty similar, but it, I, it's one of the best books that I've read in in recent memory. Um, I just can't seem to put it down, and you'll note that you know I. I um you know, I take notes and I I I am such a nerd when it comes to books. And the reason that I segued into fiction is because I named this recipe, please sir, I want some mores. And if you don't know what that is, it's it's kind of become a cult pop culture meme. It is from the Charles Dickens book Oliver Twist, which is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, I don't do tons of literature, and it, 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 I find it quite hard to read that stuff. And it, if I have a hard time, you know, processing um, what 
what a book is trying to, to, to tell me. I, I'm like a visual person, right? So as I'm reading, I'm imagining this scene in my head with the characters of like, what are they doing? Um, you know, their feelings and things like that. And, and a lot of literature can be really, really hard to parse um, because of the language that, that they use and that it's wrote in. It's just that people spoke differently um, when, when that book or, you know, when literature was written, that people talked differently than they do now. And it can be really, really hard to, to read that and to consume that. Um, uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I absolutely adore that story. It is incredibly hard to read. And, and if you can really get into it and, and like, kind of like, I always kind of like try to process it as like, you know, what would this be like now? You know, not, not, not changing anything, but like what, what language would they be using? What would it sound like? Um, and you know, all of the, all of the interpretations of Frankenstein that I've ever seen are absolutely nothing like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. That book is, is a wonderful, heartwarming story. And he always just, you know, ends up being a monster. I mean, there are some atrocious parts of the book, but it, anyway, I digress. Back to Oliver Twist. So, um, Oliver Twist is a story of a boy that he, he's, he, he's born, his, his mom, you know, dies shortly after childbirth. Nobody knows who he is, where he came from. He has nothing. Uh, he is nothing. He goes into an orphanage. It takes place in the 1830s and, uh, outside of London, and which was not a good time to be, to be in London. And, um, he's just, <laughs> the character is, is what I was going to say was that like literature, very hard to read. Oliver Twist, it's a page turner. I can't stop reading it. There are parts that are hard to parse. You know, similarly, it's written in a different a different style of language. The tone is different, um, but I the book is incredible. Um, I have never consumed um, outside of maybe like Wishbone. I don't know if you know what that is, but um, I've never I've never watched an Oliver Twist movie or anything like that. I've only I've only read the book, and this boy. Uh, you know, he comes from nothing. He's he's born into nothing. He has nobody. And uh, he's just so tormented by everyone and used and abused and, and, and they all try to get him. And uh, there, there's a scene very early on in the book that has kind of become this meme, right? You know, it, it's this little boy and, and he says to he says to the orphan master, you know, please, sir, can I have another? And, and, and this actually was, was a, was a ploy, um, to get Oliver in trouble. The other boys, uh, the other children, uh, in the orphanage convinced him to do this. And it upset the orphan master so much that he sells Oliver twist off to the highest bidder. And this, this child is so innocent and I love this character so much. And it's honestly, it's, it's really kind of like, like, the opposite, <laughs> the opposite of, of, you know, of me, uh, Oliver Twist characters, like, um, you know, he suffered, but I suffer too, but I suffer in a completely different way than Oliver Twist did. Like, uh, you know, I've battled <laughs> mental illness my entire life. And, uh, I found that the thing that helps me more than anything else is living in the moment and truly embracing every painful breath that I have to take and just being here right now. That has kept me going. For this last month, especially, that has kept me going. You know, I had a moment um, in March of 2021 where I kind of hit the lowest low that I have ever hit in my entire life. And I was, I was so sad. And, and I, I tell, I tell Kitty and I tell people that know me that, that, that is my one regret in life. And that if I could go back and change that and do it over again, I would do it completely differently because that affected so many people that are close to me. And, and, you know, recently over the last week or two or so, um, I've kind of, kind of changed my outlook on that. Um, because that was a very, very defining moment in my personal story and, and I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't be where I am right now had that not happened. And, you know, it's a terrible tragedy, but that, that, the pain makes me human and the depression gives me a reason to keep fighting. And do I not, ha do I not have those things? I don't know what I am, you know? I, I don't know, you know, if the pain goes away, 
if there's clairvoyance, clarity, calm. I don't know, uh, you know, if I can keep going. Uh, I need that. I need that to keep me going. I need something to keep me fighting. And living in the moment is is truly, like, the thing to do, you know, not, not pining on, you know, the future and what might happen and not reliving moments from the past that were really unpleasant for me, but just truly being right here and right now, making this video, vaping this. I should probably talk about this recipe. Um, I've been droning on and, you know, if I haven't lost you already, I appreciate you hanging out. I, saw, I said I said this channel was going to be different when I came back in 2022, and it is, and I mean that, you know? We're still here, we're still going to make juice, but we're going to talk a lot, and, it, and it's going to get deep sometimes, you know, I might even cry, but I said at the beginning of this video that there's a flavor in this that you're not going to be able to make this recipe the way that I have it because I don't even know if you can get this anymore. It was given to me as a gift. So it comes in this adorable little bottle, and it is called Alice in Vapeland Cocoa Extract. And this is the best chocolate flavor that I have ever tried. So there's a really fine print on here, and I'm going to try to read it. Um, but it says pure extract, a delightful all-natural extract to use in your exquisite creations. All natural flavors may include alcohol, propylene, glycol, and or vegetable glycerin made by Alice in Vapeland, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Its packaging is adorable, and I, I wish... I wish you could taste this. Uh, if you can still get this, then then do it because at 1,000%, um, you can see how dark that is. Um, I'm gonna try to not spill it everywhere because this is pretty expensive. Um, that is the that is the concentrate, and I used it at 2% in this recipe. Um, what does it taste like? It tastes like chocolate. It doesn't taste like Tootsie Rolls. Um, it doesn't taste like a Hershey's bar. It tastes like chocolate. Um, if you go to uh, a chocolatier and, and you get like 93% cacao, that's what that tastes like. It is absolutely divine dark chocolate. It vapes amazingly. So like a lot of times like Flavora Mocha is a good example. Flavora Mocha is a really, really good chocolate flavor and you can use it for a lot of different things. But if you try to push that flavor, it tastes like chalk. The texture of it tastes like chalk and I hate it. Like the flavor is very good. It needs a lot of help if you if you want to push that chocolate note. It needs a lot of help. But that's like Flavora Mocha is a is a decent like darker chocolate, you know. And then like you have like the uh, TFA double chocolate, where to me that just tastes like Tootsie Rolls. It's not bad, you know. Like you you can vape that and it tastes like chocolate. Um, it tastes like Tootsie Rolls. Um, kind of like in the opposite realm though, you know, you, then you have like this chewy chocolate and, and that's the thing I think that really bugs me the most about chocolate is like, it's really hard to nail that texture. But when you're doing a s'more and you're adding all of this marshmallow and this gooeyness to it, you can also, you, you know, you like use caramels or some kinds of creams, you know, to try to give your chocolate a little bit more texture. Um, it, it, it's kind of, I guess, similar to fruit in that regard. Like that last video that I did was, was about a fruit blend. And, and that's something that I struggle with is giving texture to fruit and, and, you know, giving texture to chocolate is, is something that's kind of difficult to do. This is another one that, um, you know, you can at least get, um, a lot of people might have it. I don't know. It is a Grimberry Solo, um, chocolate overload. To me, this flavor tastes like a brownie. Um, it is like, um, what is it called? Liquid Barn Lava Cake. If Liquid Barn Lava Cake did a good job of being lava cake. Um, <laughs> it tastes like a brownie, a chocolate brownie. It's very good. It's very buttery. Um, it's rich. Don't push that flavor. Um, it will, you know, completely destroy uh, your recipe. It tends to get uh, astringent if you try to push it. Um, 1% of Grimberry. That's what that's called, right? Yeah, Grimberry Solo. It's from Grimberry Farms. Um, the Bull City Flavors has this, so I think it might be meant to be a one-shot because it's called Solos. Um, not 100% sure on that, but 1% uh, with that Alice in Vapeland Cocoa Extract, and that is the chocolate note that is in this, and those two flavors together, they make a really convincing kind of like melty, gooey chocolate. Melty, gooey, dark chocolate. Um, it, it is, you know, not, not for the kids. I need a little bit more of that coffee. Mm.
Mm. Those go very well together. So that's chocolate note. Let's talk about marshmallows. Uh, I love marshmallows. Uh, this one's probably my favorite. We're going to use 2% of... I'm sorry, we're not using 2%. We are using 1% of one-on-one -on -one marshmallow vanilla. Um, this is... It's very buttery. It has a really good vanilla note, um, and it is a little bit chewy. And when we combine that with Wonder Flavors Marshmallow Gooey, which is very, very, very similar, but the chewiness factor, the gooiness factor of this, it tastes like a very, very good melty marshmallow. 1% of that. And then we are also going to throw in there 2% of TFA's Toasted Marshmallow. So uh, Toasted Marshmallow, honestly, it does not taste like a Toasted Marshmallow. But it does have that sort of like... <clears throat> I mean, it does taste like a Toasted Marshmallow. It's not, I wish it was a little bit more toasty, honestly, but it, it is the best toasted marshmallow flavor as far as getting that kind of like almost custardy spun sugar, you know, you've got little brown crusties on the outside of it. Um, it it's good, 2% of that. That is our marshmallow note. So chocolate marshmallow. The last thing um, that is an important part of this more is the graham cracker, of course. And uh, you know, it's, I, I love graham cracker, but it's not my favorite part of this recipe. I chocolate note. Uh, we're going to use 2% of TFA cheesecake graham crust. So cheesecake graham crust doesn't really have a cheesecake note. There is some sort of like buttery, creamy thing going on in there, but mostly it's just a, a medium, dark, crunchy graham cracker flavor. And then like I said, uh, mystery flavor, the piece de resistance, 1% of flavor West waffle cone. I know, right? Weird. I never, ever, ever would have thought of that, using that as a graham cracker. I don't, I, I had it for years and I never even used it. And it's, it's a good graham cracker. Super duper good. Please, sir, I want some more's. Oh, sweetener. Uh, Flavor West, 1%. I mean, it's what I'm going to use. Feel free to use whatever you want in there. Anyways, s'mores, Oliver Twist, a flavor you can't have, and living in the moment. Look, if I can do this, you can do this too. You can get flavors, and you can make delicious juice, and never have to worry about not being able to go down the street to get the things that you need to stay off of cigarettes. If you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the video and leave a comment down below. Tell me your crazy camping stories. All right? I'll catch you guys in the next one.